Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released watchOS 11.2 to the public. watchOS 11.2 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you have a watchOS 11 supported device. And this particular update was released alongside many other updates with iOS 18.2, iPadOS 18.2, Mac OS 15.2 and others for TV OS, HomePod OS and Vision OS as well. This update came in at a fairly small 164 megabytes on my Apple Watch Ultra 2 in black titanium and varies in size depending on which update you're installing from and which watch you're using, but it's not a huge install overall. Now, before we talk about the features, let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go down to settings. And under settings, there's actually a new build here compared to what we had with the RC. So if we go to general and then about, you can see the build is 22S101. This is a new build coming from the RC that was the release candidate, which is typically released early for developers and public beta testers. So there was another update. If you wanna stop receiving beta updates, just go into your settings under your Apple Watch and just like on the iPhone side with iOS, go into your software updates and turn off your beta updates. Once you have this build number, then you can stay on the public version if you no longer wish to receive future updates. Now, the first new feature has to do with the camera. If we go into camera, so we'll go up to where we have camera here, our camera control or camera remote now not just opens the camera, but if we have this here in the background, we can tap record like we always could, but we now can tap pause. So we have the pause option, just like we've had on the iPhone for a little while. So if you want to pause the footage directly from the camera on the Apple watch, you can do that. You can see that sometimes it's not actually showing the preview for some reason. So even though I'm on the latest versions here, let's go ahead and close the app on both. And then we'll go back in and see if we can get the preview. There we go. Now the preview is working properly. So it looks like there's still a little bit of a bug there, but again, we have the pause option. So it's nice to see that they've added that. Another update we have has to do with tides. If we go into the tides app, so we'll scroll down here to tides within tides. If we go and search for different areas, we have some new options that they've added. So you'll see the regular ones we've had before with Mavericks beach, Waikiki beach. And if we go down, we can now add options such as Hong Kong, as long as it's on the coast of China, we now have the option for that. So it's a little bit difficult to type here with this tiny keyboard. So we'll try that. And if we do a search for it, it should come back with big wave Bay beach. So you'll see, depending on where you are in China, if you're on a coastal city, you'll have the option to see the different tides in that specific area. Another thing they've updated has to do with fitness. If you're using the fitness app on your Apple watch, so we'll go into fitness here and with the fitness app. Now, maybe if we go to fitness plus and maybe we go to cycling under cycling, if maybe we start a workout here, we'll go ahead and press play on the workout, give it a second to load. And if you have this connected to gym equipment, or maybe you have home equipment that actually will work with this, this actually now will show not just your information here with your calories and time, but also your RPM for the actual cycle that you're using. So if you've got it tied to that equipment, you'll see that here so you can keep track of it. Another update in fitness has to do with awards. So let's go ahead and end this workout. And if we go back, we'll go under summary. And if we scroll down, you'll see awards. There's some new awards for closing your rings. You can see that at the top here where it says, go for it. 100 all rings closed. We have those options now. So if you want to work on closing all your rings, you'll actually get an achievement for it or an award for it. We also have some updates in the holidays for a different watch face. So you may or may not see this. It really depends on the day, but just like Apple updated the Snoopy screen savers on the Apple TV this time around, we now have some new ones that change based on the season here with Apple watch. So if we stop this, wake it back up, you'll see it changes. And of course you'll see many of the familiar ones, but during Halloween, we actually had the great pumpkin or some different scenes from it that would sort of show up here during Christmas. I would expect the same, but we don't know that a hundred percent either way though. They typically change this up quite a bit where they'll sort of surprise you with different animations throughout the day that you may have never seen before. Now, if we go back to the watch face I was using, we'll talk about that a little bit later as many people want to know what it is. If we go down to our settings, I wanted to share a certain tip with you. This is something that many people have been asking about, and it specifically has to do with the brightness of the display. If you're using an Apple watch and it goes too dim, maybe you want it to stay a little bit brighter. It's fairly easy to do that. So if you go down to accessibility, 
Under your settings, continue to scroll down. You'll see below here it says minimum brightness. Increase the minimum brightness of the display when it automatically adjusts to ambient lighting conditions. So if you want it to stay brighter, even when it's dimmer in the room, it will do that and this will help you see the display. Many people have asked me about this and it's just a little tip as far as how to use this. Now, before we talk about security updates and the bug fixes, if we press and hold, this is the modular watch face. Many people have asked me about it. And as you can see here, we just have your standard complications around the outside with music, compass, weather. We also have the date as well as messages. But in the middle, there's an app called Lumi. This is a paid app that I paid for myself. And you'll see here, countdown to sunrise, countdown to golden hour and day overview. So if you want to know when the best time to take photos or video is, this kind of gives you an idea of that. So that's something that I'm using. I sometimes use this watch face along with the modular ultra watch face. I go back and forth. As far as security updates, well, there are quite a few of those as well. If we go to Apple's security website and on Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, you'll see all of the latest releases here. And if we find watchOS 11.2, you can see all of the updates here with Apple mobile file integrity. We have updates for font parser, image IO, kernel, scene kit, web kit, and more. And to understand what's going on here, of course, we can go through each one of these. It doesn't look like any were exploited, but you'll see as far as the impact for this one particularly, it says processing maliciously crafted web content may lead to memory corruption. To fix it, the issue was addressed with improved memory handling. And then we have the CVE number and someone that may have su sort of submitted the issue to Apple about this. So lots of things here along with additional recognition below. Now, as far as bug fixes, well, Apple did not specify any specifically. However, if you were running some of the earlier versions or the beta, if we go into the settings, there's an update here. Within the settings, if we go back to where we have battery, so let's go back here, scroll down to where we have battery, and under battery, one of the things that seems they fixed, especially if you're coming from one of the betas, is battery health. There was one of the betas that was installed, and then for whatever reason, everyone lost 5 to 10% of their battery health. It was a miscalculation, and they've since patched this. So they did patch it in some of the betas as well, but it's definitely working properly this time around, and you'll see I'm at 100%. Apple Watch seems to stay around 100% longer than iPhone in my experience, where my Apple Watch Ultra 2 is still at 100% also. When it comes to battery life itself, well, this has been off the charger a little bit, and we're down 4%. It stopped at 80%, and typically it's easily getting me through a day. Even with the previous betas, I've had no issues whatsoever, and it looks like it's more of a refinement update when it comes to that. As far as overall performance, I haven't noticed any changes here using this, and you saw that when opening the camera remote. If we go into noise maybe and measure the decibel level, things seem to load fairly quickly. I've had no issues with that whatsoever. So if we want to go into music, you'll see it loads right away. If we want to go into something else, it seems to be fairly fast and snappy overall. So again, heart rate, go into it. Things are just loading quickly as you would expect. So if you're wondering if you should install watchOS 11.2, well, for the security updates alone, I would definitely recommend it. That will fix that as well as your battery health. If you were having issues with that and additional features with tides and more. So it's not a huge update, but definitely a nice little update as far as that goes. And as far as the next update, well, I would expect that any day now. We could see that as soon as today or tomorrow, or we could see it sometime next week with watchOS 11.3 beta one. That's typically what we get every year. And then we'll have a little bit of a break over Christmas and New Year's where we won't have anything until usually the second or third week of January. So we'll have to wait and see if they do the same thing this year, but that's what I would expect based off previous years. So based on that, I would expect them sort of to have the same release schedule, but they have changed it up just a little bit this year. So that's everything with watchOS 11.2. Now I don't see a whole lot of other changes coming to this until watchOS 12, where maybe we'll get some more features and changes. But at this point, it looks like these are more small refinement updates compared to what we've seen before. If you found any additional features or changes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>